British were ready for them. They chewed up a couple of Jap divisions and our rear line of communications remained secure. At the same time, the Chinese in western Yunnan were attacking west of the Salween. They were confronted by appalling conditions of terrain and weather. Japs also were an obstacle, but not for long. Now the Chinese and Americans advanced on Bamo, while the British, backed up by other Chinese troops, secured their right flank by advancing from Mogong on Qatar. Objective Bamo. The Chinese and American troops crossed the Irrawaddy and its tributaries and proceeded southward. Remembering how Michinaw had held out, they were prepared for a rough welcome. That's Bommel. Just as expected, the Japs were rat-holed in with the hole pulled in after them. Our next move was to make it a very uncomfortable hole in a very noisy neighborhood. didn't take as long as Michinaw, and the result was the same. We moved in. We had then reached a stage where we could foresee the opening of a land route to China, the Lido Road. The story of the Lido Road was a saga in itself. It was one of those things that a lot of the experts said was impossible. And a lot of you who worked on it must have thought that it was impossible at various times. Lido. Terminus of the Assam Bengal Railroad in the Indian province of Assam. This is where the road, the impossible road, began. 500 miles to go to a junction with the Burma Road. 500 miles of a very considerable amount of jungle. Five hundred miles of hacking it down, clearing it away. Sawing. Chopping. And blasting. A lot of blasting a lot more clearing away. Yes, it looked impossible from time to time, but General Pick had said the Lido Road is going to be built. Mud and rain and malaria be damned. So the road workers kept scratching away at the geologic nightmare that separates the peoples of India and Burma. scratched and scraped away until even if you hadn't been told, you could still almost recognize what they were trying to build.
Sometimes when a section of the road had been built, the monsoon came along and washed out every trace of their work. So they went back and built it over again. This time they built it up in the air, on a causeway. They built bridges. 25-ton ponton bridges and log bridges. And portable steel bridges. And through truss bridges. They built every kind of bridge there is and then they invented a few. Then one day the road was finished. All the way from India to China, the roadbed had written a message of American courage and persistence across the face of the jungle. Many of the men who wrote that message were there no longer. Malaria had got them, or mite typhus, or heat prostration, or jungle sores, huge ulcerous things that eat clean through the flesh to the bone. Sometimes the enemy got them, for this road followed always hard on the heels of the combat troops. This was the day of the payoff. It was quite a moment for all the men who had conceived, struggled with, and executed the project. The ceremony was simple. General Pick, commanding the first convoy, said he was ready to go, and General Sultan said, go ahead and good luck. And so the first convoy was launched. Right about then, they gave the road a new name, the Stillwell Road. It's a good name for it, a damn good name. But the name the experts gave it in the beginning is still the best, the impossible road. Truck drivers, we wish you Godspeed, but it's not possible that you're starting off to drive to China. That causeway isn't possible. Those bridges aren't possible. Neither are those turns. Or those grades. That roadbed can never climb over those mountains. that for the first time in three years, the blockade of China is broken. And you're rolling into Kunming with supplies for the Chinese army and a new lease on life for the Chinese people.